the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. And, 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 uh, I, I couldn't bring anything else to the table at this point because I ain't got nothing to bring. So I was kind of hoping somebody else had <laughs> got something else because I didn't see it. I really did. And I, I, hope, it, I hope that the ones who have gotten a revelation from the Lord would, you know, be willing to share it. Right. And, and, and so, Bruce, that's probably where we at. And, and, I, and I concur. I, I like the fact here, man, that uh, sometimes coming together. <laughs> We, we, we get revelation popping in from the uh, reading scriptures. But we do encourage uh, everybody to invest in it, invest in the time to question. So when we come to the table, we can get that that meaning, you know, from you. But God is talking to all of us. You know? uh, that's why I think even with that prayer, look, we're going to ask it back to the prayer again. Listen, right? Hearken. Because he's talking. He's talking to everybody. I mean, even I was thinking, man, when I was, when we just went through about this, how the all those other scriptures refer right back to verse three. Listen, the sower went out. To I mean, everything points back to the fact is that if you don't get understanding, this parable says. There's my dad again. It, it, it's the fact that you don't get the whole situation that everything we preach is about Jesus Christ. Uh, I, I don't think you, 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 you know, we're going to miss the whole boat. That, that's how I'm looking at it. Yeah, so, but I, I, I would, all I can do is give you my, my ability to put my time in. <laughs> but, <laughs> But I can encourage others. That's all we can do. I think Brother Asa just, he's been traveling. He's been seeing his grandchildren. Uh, so I think that's been a challenge for him anyway. <laughs> a blessing, too, Brother Asa. That was a blessing. You go see your grandchildren. That was a blessing. Oh, yeah, it really was. Yeah. That, that was that was, that was a blessing. Yeah. So, so I can relate to it. But discipleship, I, I think it still is, if those are ready to still try to talk about the efficient, I really was, when I was going through it, look at this here, I was, uh, I was in all aspects, I think Brother Asher said, the gospel, discipleship, Brother uh, Elder Johnson, is being able to discipline ourselves through all of these areas that are being so tight. Like unbelief, right? The wayside business saying is the wayside. Is but I also think there's this unbelief in all believers in different levels of, of areas, right? I, I, there's there's unbelief and dealing with maybe healing. There's unbelief dealing with there's some things that we have to work with dealing with unbelief. So, so when, when, I, when I think in terms of discipleship, and I'm at deep breaks at this level, I think of how we are encouraging or inspiring each other to align ourselves with Jesus. Uh -huh. So I didn't see that. You know, I mean, like I said, I might have to go all the way back to make the correction up. But I didn't see how that parable actually, you know, instructed us in aligning ourselves with the Lord. But when the when the, when the uh, discipline what what's a person is disciplining themselves for, right? Discipleship means discipline, right? Right. Discipline right. follow of someone. Right. So Jesus throws a right, we throw a right. Jesus kicks, we kick. You know, this is form, you know, follow the foot extended, you just you know, kick from the to the extend of the, 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 the knee, the joint, you know, that kind of thing. So whatever his form was, whatever that's what we, that's what I understand the discipleship to be. Right. To have a lifestyle that's conformed. Yeah. So, so that lifestyle is to discipline ourselves and believe. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to about this phone, man. I, it's dropping in and out. I can't always hear what's going on. Okay. 
what was that? I may have, I have to pull over and make an adjustment somewhere. Okay. Okay, so I, I, I have a, a question that's <laughs> important to me. <laughs> when you say discipleship, right. are you talking about being discipled or discipling? Yeah, yeah, that's the thought too. I think, well, me, I consider the discipline, the word discipline is- No, 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 I, I'm not talking about the, 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 the definition. Yeah, I'm talking about yeah. what, what, what the, the action, what, which, which one is it that right. we're talking? Are we talking about discipling we're talking about Jesus discipling his disciples or disciples being this, this you know, disciplined right. by Jesus. Which, which, which are we, which aspect <laughs> are we looking at? And if it's both, then that's something I need to know as well. I think it's both. Well, the, the first question that should have been asked in my opinion. When I heard when I if I would have heard this question, the first question I would have asked is, what is discipleship? Yeah. And and when I look when I hear that, I always look for how did Jesus define it? You said how did Jesus define it? How did Jesus define it? Okay. And what is his criteria for discipleship? Hmm, that's a good point. I, I didn't. I didn't hear you. There, there's background noise, and it's it's. What is his, what is his criteria? <laughs> okay. For the cypress field. So I just, you know, I, I just picked a simple, fundamental verse that talks about the cypress field. And it's not complex. It's not compound. It's not beyond us. It's what we already know. Mm -hmm. When it comes down to the cypress field, this is what Jesus. This is how Jesus defined it. He says, in any place you look at it, it's pretty much the same. He says, if any man will come after me, you want to be a follower. If you want to be a student, you want to be a trainee. If you want to enter the kingdom, then he said those very basic things. Deny yourself, take up your call daily, follow me. I consider that to be the foundation of discipleship. That's the first question you should ask, okay? If we talk about discipleship, what is it? And it doesn't matter how, how you look at it, whether who, whether you're whether you're being disciple or someone discipling you, the criteria always remain fixed and unchangeable. I think it has remained fixed and unchangeable down through the years. It is always those basic fundamental things. Yeah. You know, I, I was, and I agree with that. That's that's one of the follow follow him. I was looking. At, I thought the other one that, and I kept saying it throughout this uh, our discussion was where he said Jesus answered and said to them that the question came up in uh, John. I'll show it to you. Bishop, I think it that that still falls in line with you saying, but I was just how I was looking at discipleship was in John uh, chapter six. Uh, when they asked the question, uh, it says, then he said unto them, and we could always read 26 to 29, maybe we read both of them. I'll read 26 to 29. Uh, Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, you seek me not because you saw the miracle, but because you did eat the loaves and were filled. Labor not. For the meat which perish, for that meat which endures unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him has God the Father sealed. Mm -hmm. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? I mean, to me, it's like, What I need to do? What do I, how do I need to discipline myself to, to, to do the work of God? And Jesus answered and said to him, This is the work of God, 
that you believe on him whom he has sent. And and I, that's how that's how, and but I agree with your scripture saying is pick up your cross, you know, and follow him because that 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 requires your effort to need to be done. But I just want to make sure that they never forget why what they're working for, what they're picking a cross for. And that is to believe in him who God sent. That's the work of the ministry. So that's how I was looking at it too. Uh, pick up your cross. Paul said die daily and discipleship. To me, it's like you're not only ministering to others, but you're ministering to yourself daily. Picking up that cross daily. In, in, in that definition uh, that Christ gave, you know, uh -huh. Also, the, the what uh, Bishop has said, you know, desi deny thyself, take up your cross yeah. daily, and, and follow Christ. What what does he mean by take up your cross daily? Can I say something? You say? Can I guess what I want? Can I say something? That's what I, that's what I was hoping you would see in the parable, because in the parable. If you have done a little, you know, it will take a little bit of work, and you have to, you know, you have to really be thinking about these things. But if you took all four of the parables, right? I, I took all four of the parables and I brought them up. And I looked, I laid them out side by side, and I just kind of walked through. For example, if you if you go to the stony ground, you will notice that in all four, all all the parables where this story is told. You'll find these words that are used. They vary across the parables. If you look at if you look at Tony Brown, you'll find things like tribulation, afflictions, persecution, and temptation. Those words are used to describe the Tony Brown. Okay. Mm -hmm. Tribulation, affliction, persecutions, and temptation. Now you wouldn't have gotten that if you just looked at one of them. Uh huh. So I did that for all four. Of them. I, I I go to the I go to the thorny ground. I found stuff like worldly care, worldly lust, pleasures, the deceitful riches. Right. Those are the words that you across all three parables describe the thorny ground. All right, now when you think about that, to bear the cross is really a means of putting to death the old man. Yeah. It's not, so you gotta be thinking. So when Paul says in Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. Mm -hmm. yeah. When he says in Romans chapter 6, know you not that so many of us that were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even also we should walk in newness of life? Mm -hmm. He concludes that section by saying this, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but what he is describing is what God has done to you. This, this is the this is that work that only God can do. He has done that in Christ. He has put you to death with Christ. Whether you accept it, whether you believe it, whether you whether you understand it, doesn't matter. When God is dealing with Christ, He's dealing with He's dealing with the sin of man. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not not just the action, but the root of sin in me yeah because he knows that it doesn't make any sense to deal with this issue if you don't if you don't deal with the root so yeah. he says if i kill the root and establish a new root then i can expect fruitfulness just like i had fruitfulness with the old root and paul says in Romans chapter 5 that before we got saved what fruit we had in unrighteousness uh-huh we were fruitful unrighteously <laughs> after the root that was in us. So if, if, if he can kill that root and replace that root, then we can, we can have a fruit for this now under righteousness. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much what he describes in, 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 in uh, 
I said Romans chapter 5, but it's the first five verses of Romans chapter 7. Now, so th this cross then is, is where you make good through faith in what God has done. For God to tell you that he's crucified you is one thing. For you to evidence that death is something else. Because see, this is not an abstract concept. This is a living reality. See, by faith, I believe that I'm crucified with Christ. By faith, when I get into a situation, I believe that death ought to, ought to control how I behave and how I respond. Mm -hmm. I'm trusting God that I'm dead to the flesh, but I'm alive to God in Christ. Mm -hmm. so, so any temptation that comes from me, any kind of affliction, any kind of suffering, how else are you going to ever know that you're with Christ if you don't part partake of his suffering? Yeah. Amen. That's what Paul said in Philippians chapter 3. And look, he said, look, it, it, it don't mean nothing unless I can know him. Yes. Yeah. And I cannot, I cannot know his power if I don't know his death, if I don't know his fellowship and his suffering. Now, and that, to me, that's what we're talking about by faith. Faith is receiving what God has said. And it's the only way it's going to manifest itself in the earth. So there is a physical manifestation. So when we say discipleship and believing what Christ has done, that makes more sense to me then. Because it says not uh, what, it says believe in the work that he has done. The work that he, he did was actually to take sin to the cross and kill it. I mean, he, 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 killed, he killed it. So, so, so it says this is, this is the work of God that, that we believe on his son whom we get set. So our discipling, is actually believing Jesus and that he did take that sin to the cross and kill it. I mean, and dealt with it. Does that make sense? Am I, am I on track with that? I don't, I know the other part about Philippians 3 sin was that may know him and the, uh, but the fellowship of the suffering is the other piece. No. That, that they, so let me ask you this question. Why do you think Paul makes all these crazy statements like, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Why does it say something like verse number 10? Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. It makes sense. It makes sense. Well, what's he, what's he, listen, Jesus died on the cross. Jesus had died on the cross, been resurrected, and sent it back. Here Paul is some, I don't know, 60, 70 years. I don't know. Some great length of time later, why is he still talking about always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in the body? Lord Elvis, man, that's powerful, there, bro. That's a powerful stuff. That's so, so, so you see, the only reason he can say that, and the only reason he can he can he can ex have experiences along those lines. It's because the Spirit of God has taken his faith in what God had done with him in Christ on the cross, and now he's applying it to his daily living. Oh, Jesus. That's how you bear your cross daily. Listen, it, it is absolutely necessary that we have tribulation, affliction, and persecution and trial, because that's what they did to Jesus. And he said his servants are not greater than he is. If they have persecuted me, it is unwise for you to expect not to be persecuted. He said that, but when they persecute you, it really in the in, 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 in the Sermon on the Mount, he said, Blessed are you when men persecute you. Right. And say all men of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. He said, Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, because great is your reward. Yeah. So he, he, is, he is ordained that by faith, we embrace the fact that God has crucified the old man, but that death can never be realized apart from an ongoing continual faith. So that when, when and that's what, that's what he's trying to get you to see when he says that they smite you on one cheek, you ain't, you ain't got to fight back now. 
Because if you really believe that the old man is dead, then the old man has the, listen, to be dead in, in this case, where he says in Romans chapter 8, that the body of sin might be destroyed, and henceforth you should not serve sin, for he that is dead is free from sin. That's his conclusion in Romans chapter 6, when he starts start talking about, shall we continue in sin? Uh -huh. and, and he basically says, how shall we that are dead live any longer there is? Mm. So, so when you start going across these parables, you start seeing these persecutions, you start seeing these tribulations, you start seeing these afflictions, to me, that's the cross you have to bear. Okay. So, when, when, hold on, when you start seeing worldly lust and worldly pleasure and safety and submission, that's why you got to deny yourself. Mm -hmm. You got to discipline yourself on that. Because right. it is the flesh that desires these things. It is the old man that desires pleasure and indulgence and worldly pleasure. He John but, said, if any man loves the world. But but you know something? It also brings you into submission to that system. So we start. Manifestations of sickness, of these kind of are part of that that system. And if we don't crucify our flesh, you will subject to that system, then we'll start to manifest the maladies of it. You see, you see, once you understand that when God joins Christ to humanity, when the word becomes flesh, he, he's dealing with mankind. He's not just dealing with individuals. He's dealing with everybody. It's a one-time sacrifice. It's a one-time work that he's going to do one time. The word becomes flesh. God has joined himself to humanity. Yes. Now he lives a righteous life, but then he dies a sinful death. He lives a complete and totally righteous life, a sinless life, but he dies a sinful death. That's right. necessary because if atonement is going to be made, atonement has to be made by someone who is sinless. Uh -huh. Otherwise, you could otherwise you could offer your blood. Hey, look, I think that would knock us out of it. But that would have took you out. Of, that would have took you completely out of the game, and that would have destroyed the whole purpose. Right. He's got to send a sacrifice that makes atonement for your sins, for your acts. Right. Well, at the same well, by time, faith, by faith, you receive that atonement, right? See me? So isn't that, is that cross when he says, "Take up your cross daily," isn't he basically saying the same thing? Like we're giving up this life of sin. We're crucifying this life. Well, when you accepted Christ, you consented to give it up. But whether you knew it or not, what you were actually saying, even when you were baptized, you see, we don't we don't understand a lot of the things that we were doing in church. When you were baptized, basically what you were trying to do is demonstrate that you understood what God was part of you. Yeah, no, we didn't. I mean, I wouldn't doubt that. Not like basically, that anyway. Basically, when they baptize you, it, your testimony was, to, was, I am now dead to the world. Right. right. I have now raised up in resurrection life with Christ, and I have now raised up into a new realm, into a new kingdom. I've died to the old, and I've been raised up in newness of life. That's why it says if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away, all things become new. We didn't understand these things. But in that parable, you see, he's addressing all of these things. He's addressing the need to deny yourself and the need for you to die. Not once, but die daily. Makes sense. That makes sense. Makes sense. Because it's a daily, it's a daily uh, decision. Now, that's not, that's not explicitly stated in the parable. That's not explicitly stated in the parable, but I'm saying when you start looking at the parable and you start looking at it from a big picture standpoint, you see, for example, the people on the wayside saw a like understanding. How does understanding affect your choices and your desires? 
Now, now, hold up, hold up. I got, got to take this away with this now. If we, you remember when you said that if, if Christ, okay, if Christ sees an injustice, he moved to correct it. We talked about this when we talked about some of the social, uh, the social things of uh, movements that take place in the, in the United States now. And our perspective on it, are we actively engaged in that? Is it something that we are dead to? Uh, and, and how does that how does that work? Was King motivated by godly principles, godly whatever? I mean, his actions were they attached to the world system, or were they attached to the king? It is a question. Yes, sir. That's a question. Well. Because when we think about being dead to the world system, I mean, to me, that's blanket. It's across the board. This is my understanding. It's across the board. It's like, we know that there's social injustice. We know that there's evil in the world, period. But so as not to be bound by that system, I think we can override it. But uh, but not to be bound by that system is, for the most part, not to have our actions dictated to us by what occurs in it. You see what I'm saying? Well, well, I think everything that is in the world is a counterfeit and is the opposite of what God actually requires. Yeah. What, is, what is in the world is of the enemy. It's satanic. It's devilish. Everything. That is why one John said, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. That's a very serious statement. That is a very serious statement because it seems like it would imply that the solutions of this world are still evil. Now, <laughs> so the, the only way to escape the world completely, according to Peter, Peter said the only way to escape the world is to die. If you die, the world no longer has any power over you. No taxes. No, no tickets. None of the governing control of the world affects you once you die to it. Amen. And what he's telling you is that inwardly, God has put us to death to the world. And it is, it is by this death that he says in Romans chapter 6, verse number 7, it is this death that frees you from the power of sin. So if you ain't dead, if you don't believe you're dead, if you don't have a knowing consciousness, a knowing awareness that you're dead, then this world still has power over you. Yeah, in other words, yeah. it still has power over you. Which goes right back to your definition of disciple. To deny thyself, take up that cross daily, and follow Christ. Which makes total sense. Um, so I, I, there's a lot that that I have to say. I just don't want. I don't want to take up a a bunch of time. Uh, but I, I think that what? Well, I guess the question is: if, if, is what we doing in our gathering a form of discipleship because I, yeah. I get I, I get a deeper understanding just from this fellowship and I think that we all have our uh, means of getting understanding of God's word and that we some of us dive deeper than others but the fact that you bishop that you you have a a, a certain way of diving into the word allows me to get a better understanding which is the discipleship to me of just how deep I should be going so it okay. it, 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 it helps 